Thank you for joining us tonight for our service. Let us take uh, your hymn books. Follow on is the song we'll be singing. 296. 296. If you have a hymn book, follow on. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go. Where the flowers are blooming and the sweet waters flow. Everywhere he leads me, I would follow, follow on. Walking in his footsteps to the ground be on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I would follow on. With my Savior I would go Where the stones are sweeping And the dark waters flow With this hand to lead me I will never, never fear Danger cannot fry me If my Lord is near Follow, follow I would follow Jesus And they would err service let us bow and ask the Lord to bless our time together tonight father we do thank you for our time this evening and Lord this opportunity for this midweek service to be an encouragement to one another and Lord just an opportunity once again to sing these songs lift up our hearts in song and Lord to look at your word as well father we think of the many that are struggling and uh, Lord especially those that um, are isolated and not able to see people and not able to even have their families close by. And so we just pray that you'll, uh, Lord, just give an extra bit of strength and blessing upon those that are in that situation. Lord, we pray for those that are not well, and we just pray that you will strengthen and heal them up as they struggle with various illnesses. Lord, we especially pray for uh, those that uh, have been working on the front lines of, I think, the medical profession and so many er other areas lord where uh, people uh, have been in contact and in working in areas where uh, they've been at uh, high risk because of uh, the the virus and uh, lord we just pray that we thank you for protecting many of them and lord just uh, continue to give them the strength uh, to continue to work in those situations now father we just pray for our service that your hand of blessing will be upon all that we do tonight. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Let us take hymn books once again and turn to 309, Dare to be a Daniel. And it takes certainly great strength to be a Daniel, to follow not just Daniel, but to follow God, be obedient to his word no matter what. Let's uh, sing verses uh, 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Standing by a purpose true, heeding God's command, honor them the faithful few all hail to Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm. Yeah. 
to make it known. Hold the gospel banner high, all on to victory grand. Satan and his host defy and shout for Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. Well, as far as things to mention, we will uh, continue to uh, follow this format for uh, this coming Sunday. And so join us back here again, 11 o'clock Sunday morning, and then again 6 o'clock Sunday evening as we come uh, via Facebook Live. We appreciate all those that have been uh, joining us and, of course, faithfully uh, uh, following us uh, each week. And also uh, are thankful for the visitors that we've had. And just uh, continue to pray for all our visitors that the Lord will speak through to them through the message and through the medium that we're using here. Uh, also pray for one another. And there's uh, we we all need uh, continue to need encouragement and to be lifted up in prayer. So pray for one another. And uh, it looks like there is a possibility that uh, the restrictions may be changing again in the very near future. So we do pray that uh, that will work out also, and uh, it will just uh, mean we can move towards uh, getting back together and meeting at the church. Well, let us take our hymn books one more time, and we are going to turn to number 311, All for Jesus, All for Jesus. Jesus, all for Jesus, all my being's ransom powers, all my thoughts and words and doings, all my days and all my hours, all for Jesus, all for Jesus, all my days and Psalm 23 tonight. 
Psalm 23. Uh, let us uh, let us read the whole psalm. Although I'm just going to be uh, focusing on the the first verse. Wonderful psalm, certainly familiar to most people, saved and unsaved. Probably one of the most quoted psalms. Probably one of the most quoted scriptures of the Bible. And of course, such an encouraging psalm as well. Psalm 23, considered a psalm of David, and it uh, reads this way. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And how wonderful it is to dwell in the house of the Lord and to be in His will. Well, tonight, I want to take a few minutes as we look at this psalm and uh, consider that uh, first verse there as uh, the psalmist writes here, The Lord is my shepherd. You know, when we think of that uh, first part of that uh, verse, we see here that the psalmist here um, acknowledges that we need a shepherd. You notice he says, the Lord is my shepherd. And that's the sense you get from the passage as the psalmist recognizes that we need a shepherd. And we do. When you look at the scriptures... And you see how the scriptures describe mankind. There's many times in which the nation of Israel is referred to as sheep. And individuals like you and like me are referred to as sheep. Now there's something uh, uh, very peculiar about sheep. And that is uh, a number of things to consider. One is that... Uh, sheep are basically concerned with one thing, and that is, well, two things, I guess, eating and sleeping. They, uh, they don't care about, necessarily worry about their surroundings. They don't necessarily worry about uh, the uh, hoarding up food and hoarding up uh, resources to, uh, you know, provide for them uh, in uh, times when times get tough. But, and they don't... Uh, necessarily even worry about their security or their safety. Uh, sheep will, uh, you put sheep out into a pasture and uh, they make great lawnmowers because they will eat every blade of grass that they come to. And, uh, you know, that's as we, as we think of uh, typical sheep, they, uh, they're not very industrious at all. They need guidance. They need protection they need there, there's many things that they need which is why they need a shepherd and in a lot of ways we are no different in fact if you look at isaiah 53 isaiah 53 kind of describes mankind's situation oh we can be very industrious and self-sufficient, and we can uh, certainly uh, plot a path forward. We can, you know, manage our affairs. We can even look out for our sif uh, safety, our future, and our welfare. However, in Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, we have this uh, passage here referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says in verse 1, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him 
as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. All this describing the Messiah to come. In verse 3, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now here's the verse I really wanted to get to. It says, all we like sheep. So all this, now this is being foretold of what the Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah, is going to do in the future from Isaiah's perspective. Looking backwards from our position and perspective now, we recognize that this was all fulfilled in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Isaiah recognizes, and it includes himself here, he says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Now there's a couple of things I want to show you in this verse. Is that he says, all we like sheep have gone astray, and then uh, we have turned everyone to his own way. First thing we want to acknowledge here is that without a shepherd, we will wander our own way. Without a shepherd, we will head into a direction that pleases us. And for the unsaved individual, and for most, that direction, that way that we will wander in, just because of our sin nat nature, does not please God. It's not we're, we're not naturally inclined to, to follow God or, or to take the, the right direction. That's why uh, God likens us in the scriptures to sheep. The sheep is most concerned with uh, satisfying their immediate needs, that which uh, fulfills them right here and now. And if we're honest with ourselves, we're like that as people. And as Isaiah says here, all we like sheep have gone astray. We wandered our own way. We'll be coming back to Isaiah in a minute here. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And 1 Peter highlights this as well. 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 21 says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So you see Peter's writing from our perspective, looking back to uh, what uh, Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Verse 22, Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep doing what? Going astray, he says, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. We needed that shepherd to get us back in the right direction. We needed that shepherd to pull us back, really, from the brink of destruction and to turn us towards our Heavenly Father, to turn us towards heavenly goals and a spiritual direction left to ourselves and left to our own devices, we will wander astray. Look at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Jesus refers to individuals as sheep. Matthew chapter 10.
Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5 says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But he says, Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, their, their, their focus in the, in the start of this ministry here and uh, the work of Jesus Christ at the beginning was to go and focus on God's people. Of course, the nation of Israel. And you notice there that he describes them as lost sheep. They were a sheep without a shepherd. And guess what? They were going in their own direction. And amazingly enough, when you, uh, you know, read through the gospel accounts, you see many of them believed that they were going in the right direction. They believed that they were following God. But the problem was is they were living up to the laws of God, demanding perfection from others to live according to those laws, and yet they missed the Messiah in that. And when Jesus came on the scene, the one who would come to be the fulfillment of the law, they totally uh, did not recognize him, missed the Messiah, and of course they, they turned their hearts on him. But as he says here, I want you to go after the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go after those that had have wandered away. You know, God had called the nation, the nation of Israel, out unto himself through Abraham. And Abraham followed God. Abraham's sons followed God. But then it's not too long that we see that they turn their hearts away from God. Of course, there's a pattern there of following God, turning away from God throughout the nation of the, you know, the history of the nation of Israel. But when they're finally dispersed at the Assyrian dispersion and the Babylonian captivity, many years before this, really the, the heart of Israel had been turned away from God. And now Jesus is on the scene sending his disciples out to be their shepherd, to redirect them back to God. Jesus tells them to go to the lost sheep of Israel. Thinking of Israel itself being sheep. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6 and verse 32, it says, And they departed into a desert place by ship privately, and the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all the cities, and overwent them, and came together unto him. Now again, this is, you know, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, particularly in the region of the Galilee. Uh, and it says in verse 34, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and he was moved with compassion toward them. Now this really struck the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, this is what Jesus came to do, is to call people unto himself, to direct them to his Father. And people are curious. They want to know what Jesus is speaking about. They want to hear more. And that's because, as he says here, he was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. You know, when Jesus describes those that were uh, following him and interested in the message that he messages that he preached, and he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. They were heading in the wrong direction. Fortunately, they were interested in hearing what Jesus would have to say. Many would get saved and become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they were sheep in need of a shepherd. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 53 and verse 6. He says, All we like street sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We recognize here that um, as Isaiah describes even himself here, we're all like sheep. Left to ourselves, we go our own way. But not only that, when we go our own way, that can have a negative influence upon others. Especially when individuals see uh, people prosper 
uh, even though it may be in a, in a negative way or worldly way, people will want to follow that influence. And so when we go the wrong way, it may have an impact upon others, others to follow the same path that we follow. And that's why he says here that uh, we have gone astray in verse 6 and we have turned every one to his own way. You know, we, we, we have to be careful that our life and testimony may have a, uh, an influence on individuals and they will follow us. When we walk away from God, they will follow us the same way. And how sad it is when we lead people away from the Lord Jesus Christ instead of to him. That is such an important uh, thought for us as born-again believers. When we talk about our testimony, our walk before the Lord. If anybody should draw people unto the Lord Jesus Christ, it ought to be us. And so we need to be careful that our walk is consistent with our talk. We say that we love the Lord Jesus Christ, and then our life should demonstrate that. So when other in, in, instead of leading people away from the shepherd, we're leading them towards the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. In our psalm there, Psalm 23, our psalmist acknowledges that we need a shepherd. And when we're honest with ourselves, we recognize that same truth. We did not have a shepherd. If we did not have the shepherd, the chief shepherd, we would be lost and going our own way as well. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. And look at the second part of verse 1 there. He says, I shall not want. You know, the psalmist here, David, recognizes not only that he needed a shepherd. You know, understand, David is described in the scriptures as a man after God's own heart, especially as a young boy. You know, David strived to do right. But even with that, Think of the mistakes David made along the way. Far from perfect. But of course, David would repent of his sinful ways, would deal with that, confess it, and of course, God forgave him. But there were consequences for it. But not only does uh, the psalmist David here acknowledge that we need a shepherd, but he recognized that the Lord was the right shepherd. We don't follow just any shepherd. We don't look for any leader that's going to provide and give us what we need and give us what we want. You know, sometimes that we're, we're so quick to do that. We're so quick to see an individual that perhaps is charismatic or an individual that seems to have the right answers, and we're quick to follow them. We're quick to put our trust in them and, and take their lead. And yet, we, we definitely want to be like David and follow the right shepherd which, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I shall not want. Look at Isaiah 40. Let's go to Isaiah 40. And in Isaiah 40... It says in verse 10, Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. What a wonderful picture is being provided to us by God here as he describes really that, that role of the shepherd and of course the Lord Jesus Christ being the, the chief shepherd, the greatest shepherd of all, the shepherd to, to follow. As he says there, he shall feed his flock and provide for them, give them what they need. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. You know, that sense of protection there. The, the sense of carrying them when the uh, for the young that need it most, and carry them in his bosom, it says, and gently lead those that are with young. You recognize here that the chief shepherd, the right shepherd, is one who provides for our needs. He's not concerned with our wants. Sometimes, yes, God will give us our wants, and we praise the Lord for that, but he does see to our needs and provides for our needs. Look at John 21. 
Book of John 21. John 21 and verse 15, it says, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? They had just, uh, Peter and the disciples had gone back to fishing after the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they had uh, been out in the sea. Jesus had been, had been seen walking along the seashore. And he calls to them and gives them direction on where they ought to fish. And of course, they cast their nets over the side where Peter tells them. And they're able to bring in a great haul of fish. And of course, now they come ashore. They dine with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus challenges them because he didn't train them up to go back and be fishermen. He trained them up to go and be fisher, fishers of men. And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Now Jesus had provided for them exactly what they needed. They had been out fishing, and Jesus provided the fish for them. But not only did he provide a physical need there, but he provided a spiritual need. He gave them direction. He pointed them in the right way that they ought to go. That's why he says here three times to uh, Peter, he says, feed my lambs, then in verse 16, feed my sheep, and then of course down in verse, uh, end of verse 17, feed my sheep once again. Jesus, the chief shepherd, had trained Peter and the other disciples that had been with him to be shepherds themselves, to go and feed the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus would no longer be with them on the earth. He would he would soon ascend up into heaven. And of course, he left his disciples behind to carry on that role of being the shepherd. Recognize that the Lord, the right shepherd, he provides for our needs. Not only does he provide for our needs, he provide, provides for our direction. As we said there, Peter, uh, Jesus used that opportunity to get Jesus and the rest of the disciples that were there pointed in the right direction. He had spent three and a half years with them, preparing them to go and finish the work that Jesus started. And so they had to be reminded of what Jesus had commissioned them to do and send them in the right direction. But John chapter 10, look at John chapter 10. Verse 1 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And guess what? They follow. And verse 4 it says, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. They know that they're going to find provision if they follow the voice of the shepherd. They know they're going to follow, they're going to find protection. Because the sheep recognize their shepherd, the one that will look after them like no one else will. And so... Jesus, the chief shepherd, the right shepherd, will provide for our direction. We need that as well for our own lives. Yes, God wants us to be examples. He wants us to be a witness and testimony for him while we are following him and following his lead. And not only that, but number three, he provides for our protection. John chapter 10, and look down at verse 9. Again, Jesus says here, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. You know, the right shepherd, the chief shepherd, the good shepherd will give his life to protect his sheep. 
Jesus gave his life not only to protect us, to, but to give us life and give it more abundantly. You know, what a wonderful thought it is to know that our chief shepherd was willing to die for you and for me, that we might have eternal life. That's the kind of protection that God gives us in his chief shepherd. And that's what a, a shepherd is willing to do for his sheep. David speaks of being uh, when he goes up in his challenge against Goliath and David is questioned you're you're just a you're just a little boy how can you even stand a chance of, against this mighty man of war this mighty giant Goliath and what's David's response he says i stood up against the bear and i stood up against the lion looking after my father's sheep because David knew what it meant to be a shepherd and he was willing to fight for his own life in order to protect his father's sheep. What a demonstration of what the Lord Jesus Christ does for you and for me. And Jesus did lay down his life for his sheep. He provides for our needs. He provides for our direction. He provides for our protection. That is the right shepherd for us to follow. And David recognized that in Psalm 23. How about you tonight? Is the Lord your shepherd? Is he the one you're ready to follow? Is he the one that you put your faith and trust in? I trust that he is. And not only that he is, do you acknowledge him? Do you acknowledge the fact that you need a shepherd and you need to follow him? And that the Lord Jesus Christ is the right, in fact, the only shepherd to follow. I trust that you have. And I trust that you know, you'll just follow the Lord's leading day by day. Father, we thank you for our time tonight and once again for a passage of Scripture that just speaks to our heart and will help direct us as we live each and every day. Father, help us to keep our eyes upon the Chief Shepherd, upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, maybe there's some out there tonight that are wandering astray and do not have a shepherd to follow. I pray that, Lord, you work in their heart and show them how they, too, can be sheep and part of the sheepfold of the one true shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray that you'll be with us now through the remainder of the week. We look forward to gathering together again on Sunday as we come back to uh, be challenged by your word. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Let us take our hymn books one more time. And let us turn to 321. 321. Where he leads, I'll follow. You know, if he is our shepherd, we're willing to follow him. So let us uh, sing... All three verses of this one. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dear far than any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless I see. He the great example is the pattern for me. Where he leads so Savior and thy 
song follow Jesus every day follow your shepherd well I trust the Lord will bless you this week have a good night and a good week ahead